Our Father in heaven, we thank you. King of kings and the Lord of lords, we bless your name. We thank you for giving us another opportunity to gather together in your presence and to rob minds concerning the issues for which Wellspring Rehabilitation Center was set up. Lord, as we go into today's discussion, please open the eyes of our understanding. Help us to learn new things and help us by your Holy Spirit to actually interact effectively so that at the end of this discussion, everybody would have learned things that would help them to add value to their individual lives as well as to add value to their communities. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are looking at the dysfunctional family unit. And the reason why we're looking at this a second time on this forum is because of the observations we've made in our last two admissions and in the things that we have experienced with those who contact us. Uh, it appears as if the family units has come under a serious infraction, which is making members of the unit to have recourse to substance use disorders. So we want to look at the dysfunctional family unit. We want to see what makes a family unit dysfunctional so that every one of us will know what we need to do in order to make the unit, the family unit we belong to, consistently functional. And so we want to start off with what a family unit is. And uh, I checked the various uh, sources and I found that a family unit is made up of the father, his wife, who is also the mother, and all their children considered as a single entity within the society. Now also the family unit is the originating source for how one learns to interact with others. And the family unit heavily influences how one will behave in future relationships and friendships. And so over a period of time, there are some units, some family uh, types that have evolved over time. And this is the original nuclear family, father, mother, children. We've also have the, you also have the extended family, which includes non-biologically related people living with the father, mother, and children. You have the single parents family, uh, then you have the reconstituted families, you know, which is formed by a couple coming together, either widow and widower or divorced and divorcee with their own children, each with their respective children coming together to form a new family okay, as a reconstituted family. Can you mute your mics, please? Those whose mics are currently on, please just please mute your mics. Now, the nuclear family is the most basic type of family portrayed by media, you know, as a happy family living in total harmony and all of that. Now, over time, societal pressures, particularly resulting in substance abuse and disorders has been responsible for the erosion of the family unit. You know. So we want to look at the contemporary variants of today's family unit. 
you know, like we have, you have a single mom and the children, single dad and the children, grandparents and the children, the new mom and dad with or without their own children. And family members are often close and they feel they can depend on one another for caring, guidance and support. Whether it's the grandparents, aunts and uncles, or even close friends who make up a family. What is important is the love or the common interest that binds them together. Now, biblically, if we want to look at the family unit, because remember we're looking at what the family unit is before we go into what the dysfunctional family looks like. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 28, the Bible says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 28 says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. So, God creating the family unit from the very first family gave certain things. We, we haven't gotten to this uh, slide yet. Aha. Please just keep it stable here on this one. You know, God gave certain things as the primary functions of the family unit, which primarily is the husband, his wife, that's the father and the mother, and their children, or in the single child family, there's a single child. And what they are supposed to do is to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth, to subdue it, and to have dominion over every other thing that God has created. Now, people sometimes refer to the traditional moral values and standards as family values. A political and social view of high moral standards has therefore become typical of a traditional family unit. In most instances, the government wants a return to the traditional family value. The love of a family is also a code like a code that should never be broken. Even when they have their differences and disagreements, the love of the parents and their children is a little complicated. While the love of siblings is a funny kind of love, they fight and irritate one another, but they also continue loving one another. The true meaning of family is, however, not just the blood relationship, the family unit consists of people who support and love one another. Your family unit is therefore made up of people who you can confide in and people who you can trust. Now, this description, what we've discussed so far, is what the ideal family unit is meant to be. Now, we want to look at the contemporary social illness that has adversely affected this family unit. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yes, this slide. Now, dysfunctionality in families is fast becoming the norm rather than the exception in today's uh, societies. And so we have something that causes an atmosphere that is, in bracket, conducive for lawlessness and coldness in interpersonal relationships. Certain factors have brought about the current state of things, this conducive atmosphere for lawlessness and coldness. And these factors which have brought about this 
current state of things. Uh, among other things include this uh, four things that we're going to share. Sorry, three things that we're going to share. The first is an increasing socioeconomic pressure on the individual, whether it's he's a father or a mother or a child. There's an ever-increasing pressure in the community, in the home, in the workplace, in school, in social system, and in the personal relationships between people, whether couples, married couples, uh, friends in school, business colleagues, this increasing socioeconomic pressure keeps adversely affecting the relationship. The second is a growing lack of knowledge in the deployment of coping skills by the individuals and the groups affected. So you find the increasing pressure is mounting. And unfortunately, there is a growing lack of knowledge in how to cope with these pressures. Now, the third is a lack of coping skills coupled with increasing pressures usually results in the search for an easy solution, you know, an easy way out. And invariably, the easiest way out has always been abuse of substances, which are always readily available, accessible, and affordable. So you find that when these three things become the norm, what you begin to see is the breakdown in the family unit, the family unit system that over time has helped to keep every community upright and intact. Now, we want to look at what makes a family dysfunctional. What are the things that we need to know that when we see them playing out in any family unit, we know that, ah, this family is in trouble. This is becoming or has become a dysfunctional family unit. Now, a dysfunctional family unit is a family in which conflict, misbehavior, and oftentimes child neglect. Look, can we go to the slide before this one? The slide before this one. Please go back one slide, Sister Titi. Yes, this one. Just leave it here for some time. No. Aha, uh -huh, this one. Just leave it here for some time, please. Mm. So a dysfunctional family is a family in which conflict, misbehavior, and oftentimes child neglect or abuse on the part of individual parents occur continuously and regularly, leading other members to accommodate such actions. Now, what this simply means is there are five key phrases that make obvious if a, fam a family unit is dysfunctional or not. And the first is conflict. A place or a unit where conflict happens regularly. Conflict between father and mother, conflict between parents and children, conflict between the members of the family happens and it's not easily addressed or it is not addressed at all. Second is misbehavior. A family unit where people behave any way they like. The family, I'm oh, sorry, the parents behave any way. They don't show the parental responsibility that is required to guide the family along the right path. The children misbehave and they get away with it. 
Thirdly, child neglect or abuse, where you have a family where the children or, you know, the child is neglected, is allowed to just wander and do things. There is no guidance, no tutelage, or that child is abused, whatever form of abuse it may be. And then the fourth is when these three things become consistent in that family unit. It becomes the order of the day. And then the fifth, which is the last key point, when everybody in that family unit now grows to a point where they accept all these abnormalities as a normal function in any family. So you find a situation where things are not going right and everybody sees it as the normal thing and there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. So for example, the father slaps the mother as often as necessary and it's happened so for so long and so frequently, the children don't see anything unusual for a husband to physically assault the wife. Uh, the parents neglect their children so badly that the children sometimes sleep outside and nobody knows where they are, and they come in the following day, and nobody asks any questions, and things just begin to continue that way until it becomes a normal practice that no member of that family unit sees it as anything that is wrong. So how can one help a dysfunctional family? Now, we need to go back to the scriptures again. Can we go to the next slide, please? And it's important for us to know that the Bible teaches how God who created the family unit wants the family unit to run. First, we see in Psalm 107, verse 20, the Bible says, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's Psalm 107, verse 20. And this shows clearly that there is no extent of degradation or extent of damage that can happen to a family unit that makes that family unit to be completely redeemable. God can always step in and set things right. It only takes the family head to sit up, take the right step in the right direction and seek God's help and it will happen. Again, we see in Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Genesis 18, 19. I read from the KJV version. This is God talking about Abraham. God says, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So God has a perfect solution to the destructions that result from all negative pressures of life. His word, the Holy Scriptures, wow. is a life-giving, sustaining, and life-regenerating spirit that creates abundant life, sustains abundant life, and recreates abundant life from a totally destroyed human lifestyle when it, the word is received, believed, and applied by the recipient. 
on a daily basis, moment by moment, all the days of the recipient's life. The abundant life-giving experience is encrypted in Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Joshua 1, 8 and 9. I also read from the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible, Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. This is God talking to Joshua here, and he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The leadership of the dysfunctional family must reconcile with God through repentance acceptance of his word, total faith and dependence on the word of God, and daily study, meditate upon, and moment by moment apply the word of God in every area of the life of the leader of that family. Now, the open demonstration of this new lifestyle by the leadership of the hitherto dysfunctional family is what will eventually transform the entire family into the functional entity that the family was originally meant to be. Now, in closing, please study and meditate on the scripture in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, from verse 28 to 69. There is a scripture. Can we go to the next slide, please? There is a scripture in John 20, John chapter 6, sorry, from verse 28 to 69. And I need you to spend time when you get back uh, after this meeting to just study that scripture and it, it will bless you. And so we will stop at this point and uh, we will just take questions and comments. Questions comments, and any other contribution that we may have.